अभी अभी पुष्टि की गई चंद्रयान थ्री को प्रमोशन की कक्षा प्राप्त कर ली गई है इट्स ऑफिशियली द लास्ट फेज ऑफ चंद्रयान थ्री हिस्टोरिक जर्नी टू द लूनर साउथ पोल Chandrayaan 3 has attained a major milestone successfully. The Vikram lander successfully separated from the rest of the spacecraft and its propulsion module, bringing it a step closer for soft landing on the 23rd of August. The separation of the lander represents a pinnacle moment in India's space endeavors. From here on, the lander will go on a solo journey till it can touch down on the lunar surface. The onboard instruments will be activated and validated over the next few days. The lander and rover are equipped with scientific payloads to conduct vital experiments on the moon. After separation, the lander will undergo a deboost. This is the process of slowing it down. ISRO will conduct complex braking maneuvers on the lander. This will essentially lower Chandrayaan-3 to a 100 km circular orbit and thereby bring it closer to the moon. It is from this strategic orbit that the lander is slated to initiate its final descent on the 23rd of August. So now uh, the important uh, thing is uh, fi final thing is softly and securely landing on the moon. For that lander has to separate from uh, the uh, propulsion module. So as of now all the modules of propulsion system has made its functionalities and uh, it has done its job. Now Vikram has to take its own course of action. For that it has to separate. So even after after separating, then the major event comes. The major event is uh, uh, four uh, 800 newton thrusters. They have to fire to take it to the lower orbit. They, that also will be done in two steps, and uh, ensuring that all the three systems are working properly. These two steps it will go down, put 100 kilometer orbit, then from 100 go to the uh, 30 kilometer orbit. 100 by 30 kilometer orbit. That's a very very vital. Why when it's going very closer closer to the earth, so the position of the module. Has to be ascertained properly. So then, uh, from the 30 kilometer onwards, how to move, how to thruster to fire, what orientation to fire, uh, whether how long it will reduce the velocity in the horizontal. Then it has to composite vertical also. It has to vertical fall also. It has to reduce. So that way, a lot of maneuvers have to be done. And while doing it, it has to make sure that it is going to the proper path. The home stretch has been described by the ISRO chief as 15 minutes of terror. That's when the lander has to fire its engines at the right times and the right altitude while using just the right amount of fuel and making accurate scans of the lunar surface before finally touching down. When at the 30 kilometers altitude, the lander begins to use its thrusters to navigate down to the surface. This is referred to as the pod braking phase. While the thrusters help in keeping the lander from crashing, The lander reorients itself to a 90 degrees for a safe landing. Then at around 100 meters altitude, the lander scans the lunar surface looking for any obstacles. If there are none, it will begin a slow descent. The thrusters will keep firing till touchdown. But this is a mammoth task. Soft landing a lunar module will require going from a speed of over 6000 kilometers per hour to zero. Just hitting the brakes will not help the situation, and this is precisely where Chandrayaan 3's predecessor, Chandrayaan 2, crashed while landing. During the last attempt, the lander had begun to turn rapidly in the last few minutes to reach the precise landing site, but still fell short by half a kilometer and ended up crash landing on the moon. This time around, ISRO has given a higher flexibility to the spacecraft compared to its predecessor in 2019. Chandrayaan 3's lander thrusters are much more advanced. While Chandrayaan 2 had five thrusters in all, ISRO has made the lander's legs sturdier, given it larger solar panels, and increased its fuel carrying capacity. The equipment was tested by soaking in temperatures as cold as those in the moon and running landing simulations on surfaces similar to the lunar surface. Even the landing site chosen for Vikram in this mission is much larger than of the previous mission, measuring four kilometers by two kilometers. After landing, the Pragyan rover will be released to study the lunar surface. The six-wheeled vehicle has instruments configured with payloads to provide data related to the moon's surface. 
It will gather data and analyze the chemical composition of the lunar surface, the rocks and the soil. While maneuvering across the lunar terrain, the rover will perform critical in-situ chemical analysis of the lunar surface. It has a mission life of one lunar day or 14 Earth days. The journey that uh, Chandrayaan uh, as a program and Chandrayaan 3 in particular has been uh, extremely uh, one that makes every Indian proud. Uh, we have certainly demonstrated to the world ISRO has and the whole ecosystem around ISRO and design manufacturing that we are amongst the leading nations in the world in terms of this type of capability. And I'm very pleased today that Chandrayaan 3 has uh, uh, completed the success, uh, separation phase successfully and I hope uh, that uh, we will soon be uh, browsing the surface of the moon. It adds to the deep technology capabilities, it adds to the confidence of our nation and it certainly positions India and the young Indians that uh, to be a central player in the decade of technology opportunities that are coming in front of us, the decade as the Honorable Prime Minister has branded it, that in, these, in, that, in that decade space and space link technologies are going to be a very important part of the technology ecosystem and that the Indian ecosystem in space and allied technologies will play a defining role there. As the nation eagerly awaits the outcome of this complex operation, the world watches with bated breath for Chandrayaan 3 to etch a new chapter in lunar exploration. With its sights set on the moon's southern territory, India is poised to go where no nation has gone before, the dark side of the moon.